Hi, my name's Rob, and we're on Anderson's TV with the Dramatics, and I'm with... I'm Tobes. And today we're going to talk about the really cool Tama Star Kit, which is their flagship range, um, all made in Japan, and it, it's their top of the range stuff. So today we took it off the top shelf from the store and we gave it a bash. So what did you think? Um, well, my first impressions, uh, it's walnut and it's beautiful. The finish, obviously, uh, with the logo under the lacquer, some fantastic touch. I think the main premise of these drums is to get maximum resonance out of the shell and the drum itself. But when I was setting the gear up, um, as beautiful as they are, I found it very complicated or slightly overcomplicated because I wasn't familiar with the, these features or these fittings. So the, my first reaction was that when I play them, there is, um, because they're trying to um, get maximum resonance, there's a slight wobble, which is a design feature that I was not used to. And on the base, on the, sorry, on the floor tom, um, the wobble is, is quite extreme. Um, but after much conversation with Rob and talking about why that is, and in fact when you're playing the drums, the wobble that you're getting uh, due to these beautiful features um, isn't noticeable. It's more noticeable to the touch and to the setup than anything else. Um, Shell-wise, um, Rob is telling me that these are a walnut and that this is, I think, is this the cheapest in the range? So yeah, there's, the Star range has three different woods, so the walnut that we've got, then a maple, and then obviously what Tama are renowned for, which is the Babinga. Um, these are the cheapest, but they're still not super cheap, so this kit doesn't come with a snare, it's still over two grand. but. You can feel the quality, they're really cool. I mean, die-cast hoop, uh, die hoops, really sturdy uh, lugs. Going back to the, uh, the mount that Toby didn't necessarily initially get on with, but it's pretty cool. Doesn't touch the drumlet. So, goes on the hoop, goes in the tension rods, and then goes the, the sort of the butt that goes against it so it doesn't wobble too much is on the other hoop. So you can literally, there's nothing in contact with the drum. So it really is resonant, it's, it's cool, it's new, like Toby proved, not everyone gets on with it straight away. But I quite like it, I've used it a couple of times. Basically there's a cool little memory lock, so you can take the lug out, so that would stay on the stand. And then this would then, when you put it on the stand that way, it would clip in, and you can do it one-handed. And then you just literally lock it in place. So it is, considering how fiddly it can be when you've got multiple drums in a setup, it's really cool. It is well designed, it's quite chunky, but it's still quite light. So Very light. It yeah. is cool for that. Absolutely, I was actually surprised at how light the walnut was from a setup perspective, especially the bass drum. And one of the lovely features actually for um, getting maximum resonance out of the drums, what I found lovely, um, is that the bass drum lugs themselves um, don't actually touch the hoop itself here, um, which from a design point of view is quite lovely. Um, and does, you know, it does make a difference. The less that is touching the drum, the more at least the wood can speak for itself. Um, and also the feet, we were discussing the feet on the bass drum here. Yeah, that's true, I forgot about that. Um, basically the feet, you can remember how high and what position it's got like a memory lock system in the foot. So you can always set it up in the same position, which you didn't realize straight away when I showed you, like, oh, no. that's pretty cool. It is lovely, and again, as from last week when we were talking about, sorry, I'm just destroying the drums, is um, we were talking about function, kits that are functional. My background, obviously, is my first reaction to any kit is how sort of practical is it in any environment. Um, and I don't um, and haven't used in any um, sort of a variety of environments this new system. My first reaction to Rob was, you know, how would it be on a drum riser, for instance, at festivals where you're wheeled on um, and risers tend to be shaking and moving, would the wobble still happen? Um, and again, I jokingly said that I used to work on ships many years ago on the QE2, um, and actually that wobble would be quite counterproductive on a ship. 
Um, what you actually obviously need is the, the kit to be totally rigid and still in those environments. Um, so that was my practical uh, point. Obviously, feel free to comment um, if you have used these in any sort of other working environment. I haven't, but that was my initial kind of response of why this feature is there. Um, so yeah, welcome any feedback on that. Well, the sort of people that do play this kit, I mean, big big name players like Peter Erskine and Billy Cobham, yep. uh, British guys, Eddie Thrower, uh, Peter Ray Biggins, they use the star range, so they they obviously have a different opinion. We had Peter Ray Biggins in store actually at the end of last year, and mm. his kit was super cool when we set it up. That was a sort of second experience with this mount. So he had three rack toms, and it worked really well on there because you could squeeze them in the stand. So. And actually, when you're, when you're playing them, you do not feel any movement. It was interesting from a setup point of view and touching the drums, but you don't feel any movement at all whilst playing, um, which you will see, and hopefully visually you won't see any, any of that movement either. Um, and actually, the resonance of the drums um, from a tunability point of view, bearing in mind we just took them off top shelf with standard heads that um, they come with and tuned them with absolutely no um, O-rings and, and no muting. We let the drums sing for themselves. They were very easy to tune and they do hold a beautiful note, um, each of the drums. So um, very, very playable, beautiful sound in this room as, as they stand off the shelf. So the kit that we've got here today, uh, it, the, there are, you can buy them in different configurations. We've got the two up, one down. Uh, you can buy one up, one down, or two up, two down, depending on how sprucely you want to spend your bank balance, but they're really cool. Um, this kit with the two up, two down has short stack toms, and obviously a bigger floor tom, but Tama are really cool because it's their flagship range. You can special order any size, so you can come and see us in the drum department and we'll spec up a crazy kit. You can have inlays with the badge on the Babinga ones. The Babinga ones come in more colors. Uh, yeah, you can you can really tailor it to your needs and your wants. But um, yeah, this, this is the standard package that we've got. But you can have, if you want square size Toms 1010 or big 24 for the bass drum or whatever, Tama will make it and it's all made in their Japanese factory. So mm. yeah, it's cool. It's, it's a clever idea in the sense I again jokingly said to get as much resonance and to let the shell breathe so much there's an extreme amount of kind of hardware on the actual shell. Um, but uh, contrary to the amount of hardware there is on the drum, they really do. I think it does exactly what it's set out to do and makes the drum sing very, very well. Um, but I would say that from a setup point of view, it does take a little bit of uh, a workout to, to get used to the basics of the new concept very much. Um, but otherwise, fantastic drums. So the drums are comprised of a six ply configuration for toms and floor toms, and then seven ply for the bass drum. Obviously that's the same for maple and babinga. Um, that's why they're quite light actually, they're, they're not particularly thick shells. This is my favorite color out of the range, but they actually do 12 different colors um, over all of the kits. The babinga and the maple have slightly more color options. Um, they do a bright yellow, which Peter Erskine uses or like the baby blue that Peter A. Biggin uses. Uh, this one's a bit more subtle, this is what I prefer, but I mean, what was your favorite color? Well, actually, do you know what? It's funny you mentioned the yellow. That is one of my, as I've slightly got older in my playing, the yellow is, and I think there's a geeky reason for it, and I think Pete Erskine uses the yellow. It could be, I think, because he's got a sports car that's yellow, but I think the yellow is also historically related to um, jazz drummers, I, th I think, and I'd really welcome your input on this. It's a geeky conversation I have a good friend of mine who texts for Peter Erskine um, using the canary yellow, I think it's called, and I think it originates from Tony Williams. The, the late, great Tony Williams used a canary yellow kit. Um, so the canary yellow is one of my favorites, which I am looking to purchase at some point. Um, so there we are, there's another fact. What we are gonna do um, is, I'm gonna put the legs on the floor tom because I'd like you also to see um, just when I was setting up today, um, just the wobble and the feature, the resonance feature that is on that drum. Um, so I'm just gonna put the legs on that just so you can see that very quickly. So um, when I set the gear up this morning, the first thing I did set actually was the floor tom. And this again um, for, for the wobble, as we're calling it, I'm sure that's not the correct technical term, but have a look, this is the feature. And this is actually how much movement you get from the drum. 
The toms, when they're uh, above the bass drum, it's not quite as extreme, but there is this movement. And I assumed, actually, that when I'd be playing the drum that I'd also be getting that movement. But when you watch me playing the kit, you'll see that actually the kit isn't moving, but it is there to create the resonance. Um, but that is quite a movement. I thought there was something wrong this morning when I was setting that up. I didn't realise it was a beautiful feature. <laughs> there we are. But the other cool feature is with this memory lock, is the lock comes out as well. Yeah. So that's the other Which cool is fantastic. Feature. Absolutely fantastic. Get it back in. All right, so um, that's it for today on Drum Addicts uh, at Anderton's TV, um, talking about this beautiful uh, Tama Star kit. We'd welcome any comments with regards to anything we've talked about today. Um, and if you want to subscribe, that would be fantastic. And we look forward to uh, seeing you guys next week. Thanks from Tobes. And thanks from Rob. And uh, check out the website for the gear. <laughs>